this um there's some things that I wish well not some things but I I wish it was a lot of things that I was trying to fix this my fault um I wish it was a lot of things that I knew now that I wish I knew back then in my 20s I think a lot of us as people were duped and were taken advantage of when we were younger talk about credit cards you know I was so naive when it came down to credit cards man. I used to be like, oh, you got your first credit card. How did y'all feel when you were younger? With those of y'all who are young probably got your first credit card. How did you feel when you got your first credit card and you had some money on there? You probably had quadruple more money than what you have right now on this little plastic thing. You felt like you were on top of the world. I did. See, I didn't understand the responsibilities of a credit card until I was able to be drowning in debt. See, um, credit cards is a symbolization of you can't handle your cash, so we're going to get this credit card for you to take care of your spending habits. But we're also going to add a back end interest on top of your cards so that way you can pay more. I mean, because we are lending you this money. See the word lending, lending, lending. See, that never synced in my head lending, lending, lending. Credit card is lending, credit card is not your money, credit card is borrowed, it's like a loan. Because you're paying interest on top of it. See, this is how they sucker you guys in. Because I was on this shit too. I was also suckered in. I don't feel too comfortable and too great about talking about my weaknesses. But why not? This is therapy, right? This is what makes you a better person. I was in credit card debt. See, people say, oh, well, you know, don't feel bad. We're all in the same too. But thing is... I had something that manipulated my mind and controlled me because I wasn't aware of the consequences, the repercussions of having a credit card. So then I sat back and I realized as I was drowning in debt, how did I get here? How did I get this far with this? financial leeching beast you know before credit cards I was debt free I had money a lot of money because I used to work real hard and I used to save money I had money I had no responsibilities when I was younger say 17 16 years old you know what I'm saying still living with my parents at the time but still you know I was able to have money but see, I didn't understand the responsibilities of having a credit card. Now, before I do um, get into this, I want to give a shout out to everybody that's in the building. On this Sunday night, we're also going to be talking about how to prepare yourself. The three money rules of how a uncle retired at 56. Now, some of y'all will say, okay, well, still kind of old, but it's a little bit young too. But we're going to get to the investment aspect of it all. But right now we're talking about um, credit cards and my, my life story. Now, credit cards, as I was saying before, it's nothing more than a personal loan. These credit cards don't like you, man. <laughs> They hit you with that backhand interest. Um, sometimes you have to 
be in a certain position in life. Sometimes you got to hit rock bottom in order for you to be humble and understand the importance of losing everything. See, when you're used to getting everything your whole life, you don't humble yourself on things. And that's the truth. See, I was getting money, but I also was using credit cards, and that's what fucked me up. Right now, I understand the importance of it because I'm almost out of debt. You know? Everything in society, when it comes down to us financing things, is a pit hole for destruction. When you go to school and you get books, you can't afford those books, but you want to get those books. Guess what? Those schools offer you a loan, right? They offer you a loan. Let me try to fix this chair, my phone. Those schools offer you a loan. Then when you get that loan, you're spending that on books. They give you 50000 here, $60,000 here or there. Maybe more and more. There's some students who get like three hundred something thousand dollars. So what's gonna happen? You use those student tuition fees on books. God damn it! This shit get on my nerves. Hold on, let me try to fix this damn thing on my computer, cause this shit gonna be popping up every five minutes. Alright, so you go ahead and use those tuition fees on books, right? So when you buy those books, throughout periods of times, your interest is going to add up. Because this is, this, is, this is related to credit cards too. Ain't nothing different from credit cards. This is this is loans because a credit card is a loan, just like you taking a loan from your student tuition. Or if you have a student tuition, I should say my bad. If you're taking a loan, I fucked up. If you're taking a loan to go ahead and pay your books, you know, and what's going to happen is they go tax you on it. They're going to tax you. And they go add interest. So that's double the money that you, what you was paying for in the first place with those books. You see, America has it systematically like this, man. They have it set up to where you become in debt by the age of 17, man. It's the youngest they try to target between 16 and 18. See, this is not necessarily y'all fault. It's not your fault. See, they don't just do it for people in the urban communities, but they do this to white people too. They do this to everybody. Because the bankers want your money. The bankers wants your money see during this whole COVID I had time to really you know just sit back watch a couple of things also be a little bit funny and humorous at the same time man. but I'm looking on IG I'm looking on Instagram and I don't see anybody talking about Fundamental educational shit. Everybody. Is so focused. On themselves. Like nobody's. 
talking about fundamental fundamental educational tools that could be helpful and useful for everybody. But people are so engaged in themselves that nobody gives a fuck about the next person. Because it's all about me. Me, 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 me. This is what's fucked up in America. And I might get some people who may not even like what I'm talking about right now. And that's cool. But y'all can't deny that this shit ain't real. We in trillions of dollars in debt, right? And one third of it is credit cards. But credit cards is a loan. Just like a mortgage payment on a house is a loan. Just like loans, student loans. <laughs> Like any type of loans, personal loans, that's all related to banks, man. Even payday loans. See, if they can't get you with the credit cards, they're going to get you with the payday loans, man. Shit, I'm a victim of that. See, the banks are here to suck you dry. See, through this, through this whole pandemic, man. Through this whole pandemic, I had some time to really think about shit. Think about my life, seeing where it's going. I'm not really liking it, to be quite honest with you. I could be at a, in a better position than I am in right now. I know that I wasn't properly educated. But I could see, I, I see that now... The stuff that I know now is powerful. It's powerful than a motherfucker. And it's like I was heavily influenced by people around me. Uh and when I mean heavily influenced, I'm not talking about like in a positive way. But I'm talking about like I was manipulated in certain aspects when it came down to friends, when it came down to people around me. I was told I should be this person, I should be that person. You should act like this, act like that. Won't you dress like this? And it's like through this whole ordeal, even growing up and even into my adulthood, man, I realized that. Nobody gave a shit about how I felt. All these people that wanted me to do certain things was all to do with what those people saw or what their per perception of who I should be, right? So I got the credit card. So I started buying shit like, you know, Sean John, FUBU, and Jordan stuff that I never had big chains <laughs> oh man I air force ones back then man I just went all out shit hell I even took trips overseas with this plastic what's in your wallet <laughs> listen man what I know now is so powerful that I sit back and I say to myself, like, I'm not mad at myself because close people close to me were trying to tell me this stuff, man. Even my mom tried to warn me about this shit, but I was young at the time, too. See, I didn't get the answers to why you don't want me to do this, but you tell me not to do this. But sometimes I needed I needed uh, an answer why. So that way, I can I could bring that in my mind, and I could I could think about it. Okay, yeah, this makes sense then, because it's like your whole life you've been lied to. Shit, even from your parents, 
About from the Tooth Perry to Santa Claus. <laughs> Everybody's been lying to you, man. Even credit card companies, even banks lie to you. And guess what? They hit you with them hidden fees. <laughs> so you suddenly think to yourself, well, damn. Who's there to believe? What is there to believe? It's a sad situation when you feel like you're by yourself. And the only person you could depend on is you. I'm going to give you guys my rules. My three favorite rules. Saving rules on how to prepare yourself and possibly for early retirement and some stuff that I've been getting into that's elevated me to a different level. Now, listen, I'm not rich. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have none of that shit. But I'll tell you what. During this pandemic, I started to read a lot about the stock market. I got so interested in it. It became a drug to me. I got so into the stock market. I started to see the potentials. The, the, my mark, my money started growing. You know, the possibilities that I can be a multimillionaire if I invest this money the right way. I've seen it with people who invest their money and watch that shit grow. Invest in the crude oil. Like new shares right now, like your Apple, Tesla. Invest into robots because we. I'm gonna talk about that too. I have a video about robots that are taking over. Listen, I've seen commercials with robots. They keep showing like y'all people think this is a joke, man. Y'all people really think it's a joke. When I say robots is about to come, y'all really think y'all boy. Robots are about to replace y'all people. You know how they had slavery back in them days? And after slavery, then they started just paying people to work and doing labor, you know, getting paid. Now the money's becoming not very that much popular anymore. Maybe they just don't want to give you money. So guess what they do? They invented robots now. I seen robots driving cars. <laughs> and they building over here in these countries, man. I got robots in kiosks. Robots making burgers and fries, man. I'm chops. Them fast foods about to be obsolete because guess what? Y'all about to be replaced. And sooner or later it's go go on to other stuff. This is some scary times, man. Man, what's going to happen to people? When they ain't got money, they can't afford shit. Y'all think this COVID shit is the last? Y'all think we we won't never get back? We will never have a feeling like that again? 2001. Y'all know what happened. The world shook when we had 9-11. 2008, we had a, a recession. The world shook. Shit. And now, fast forward to 10 years more later, we have Corona. I mean, come on. All these events just happen every 10 years, but hey. Guess what? I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I'm a stupid one. See, when I used to talk about shit like this, people, some people don't have a mindset to really think beyond what's in front of them. Because they only believe what they find, what's in front of them. Because they still, they still haven't woken up. As far as credit cards go, my friendly advice, if you need a credit card, ask yourself, why do you need a credit card? And what's the purpose of it? Well, depending on the interest rate, whatever you apply for, same thing goes for loans. You know, if it's something that's going to get you out 
of your depths, then do so. But you have to promise yourself that's what you're going to do with the money. See, that's the problem. When people have the money, they don't know how to handle the money. We become an adept slave to society of our reckoning of our future. You know what I'm saying? And they don't handle their responsibilities. So. Makes you kind of think. So I'm going to read y'all a story, man. About the three ways, the three rules. The three money rules that could save your life. Not your life, well, not really your life, but your financial situation. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put out one of them. Invest. Invest. Invest, 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 man. No matter what it is, try to invest in some. That's how you're going to empower yourself, and you can use that money to pass on to your generation. Generations, generations, if you guys have kids, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to invest, man. You can't be working for these people, man. What the hell these jobs do for you? What the hell these jobs have done for you? You work hard. You bust your ass. You work hard, you bust your ass. And sometimes you deal with a a bitchy boss. Who don't got no respect for you. And just wants you to do shit. But when you do it. Correctly. It's still not good enough. We all been through those. Or you go to work. Or you just dealing with that. Snitch ass. Lame ass dude. That always wants to go to the manager. To see. Uh, oh I saw. I saw Andrew over there. And. He was doing his job. He looks like uh, putting a finger in his nose. Digging his boogers. Like, come on, man. Some shit like that. Some crazy shit. I'm just making up some shit right now. You got to deal with those kiss asses. Those assholes. And you're like, really, man? Like, if you got a problem with me, just come to me. Why you got to go to management? Try to get me fired. Try to cut me off of my breath. See, that's how people get killed, man. That's how people get fucked up in this game. Mind your whole business. I hate people like that though. You know what I'm saying? Shit is so whack. But it's like. I got to a point in my life where. I don't like dealing with certain people. I don't like dealing with people period. <laughs> I'll be real with you man. It's just certain people man. Maybe it's just the age group. I don't know. Because even some older people can be annoying as shit. We all know who they are. Who they can be. But anyways, man. Let's get down to the three. Um... Hold on, we got the three money rules. So this woman says my uncle retired early at an age of 56 after leaving or after living by three money rules his whole life.
after teaching himself about money she says my uncle retired at the age of 56 and paid off his mortgage in eight years it's pretty damn good pretty damn good eight years to pay for more depending on how, how much the house is though he started he started by saving 15 percent of his income early on then increasing his savings as he made more money now here's the thing he started by saving 15 percent of his money income early on then increasing his savings as he made more money now listen I'm gonna tell y'all something about savings accounts and the honest truth this is how I know some of this is kind of bullshit these articles are bullshit a lot of them are bullshit and they say a lot of bullshit so that way they can trigger something in your head to want to do some shit like that listen I was told from my mom save your money save your money save all your money what you saving it for what you saving it for what you get old okay that makes sense because when you, you you're not working anymore you have money for yourself but guess what that's part of the plan but see what your parents some of them are from baby boomer generations, probably silver great generation. I don't know what the hell they call those. Y generation. I don't know. Well, I'm part of that shit, so that's still but the ones before us. You know what I mean? See, they were taught to save your money. Save, work hard. Work real hard and save your money. But see, where they failed to understand is that we're in different times and different generations and with this generation we do more than just saving we use money to create and build see saving your money is one thing investing your money is another see I like the whole investing part more than savings it's more corporate it's more ritual see when you invest you own a piece of something you own a piece of a company so what makes it so great is that you have an opportunity to make a lot of wealth that most likely saving your money wouldn't really get you too far in because when you save your money it's just dead money sitting there that's it it's dead money Okay, you got that money, you save it, but you leave it there, it's not going to grow anywhere. You think the banks are going to make your money grow? <laughs> no, they're designed to take your money, not make it grow. So, when you use your money, you invest it into a stock market. You invest it, you invest it into mutual funds. Which mutual funds are part of a bank, but still. That's the only good possible part that you can reconsider on savings but I wouldn't even bother go for mutual funds I, I don't trust banks um, that's just me I mean hey you guys don't have to listen to a word that I'm saying you don't have to give a fuck but I'm just being honest with you all just based on my experience I don't like banks I don't trust banks the only type of trust of banks I trust would possibly be the ones where you do pre advances of let's say uh, um, you can do direct deposit with with those uh, what those those cash one bank cards I think I think those those cards where you put money on and shit you can have money transferred over yeah because there's no interest or anything like that. I mean, whatever it is that you use, you use. And they also have uh, their own, uh, I think, loan system where they don't even charge you, like, barely a lot. And they don't add in those hidden fees and all those backhand money that you have to pay at the end. It's not like that. 
It's straightforward. So, you know, it makes you think. <laughs> Everything's controlled from the bankers, man. The bankers own apartments, complexes. The bankers own houses. The bankers own cars. The bankers own planes. The bankers own airports. The bankers own houses. Well, I did say that. Um, hell, they own water. They own everything. The only thing they don't even own, the only thing they don't own is air. And they probably might end up owning that too soon. Listen. Regarding to this story that I'm reading right here. Saying that she, he started by saving 15% of his income early on, then increasing his savings as he made more money. But see, you could do that with anything. You can increase your money by saving, which is great. You don't touch it. You leave it for a rainy day. But eventually, you it's just dead money. It's just dead weight sitting there. It's not going to grow. Your money won't grow. You, you're just making it grow by putting your money away. But <laughs> how is it going to grow, grow? The way it should be growing. See now. If I knew. Like I said. What I knew. Now. Back then. I would be a multi-millionaire. Okay. I'd be a multi-millionaire. I'd have millions of dollars. Invested. In the stock market. It's all about investment. Investments don't even have to do with the stock market. You can invest outside of the stock market. Hell, you can invest in a business. You can break free from your business. You can break free from this 9 to 5 slavery plantation that we that we're living in right now. Now the, the coronavirus is over with or during the pandemic. I don't even know if it's over with because it's still around and shit. But during this pandemic, which we're still in, uh, they were hiring. They had some jobs that were listed, but most of these jobs were jobs that, you know, it's going to require you a lot of fucking work to do, but they want to pay you peanuts. Why? Because these owners, these, these people who have these businesses, okay, these big corporation businesses, not the moms and pops, but it's usually the big corporation businesses, they need to take their cutbacks because they've lost a lot of profit. See, this is where you get to understand business. See, when the economy was on the decline, they had some work. They were probably getting overbooked, especially the food industry or any type of industry dealing with that type of perspective, essential work. You got to understand that you, they were trying to get more work out of you and pay you less money. That's what they did in Florida. I don't know where everybody else, everywhere, because maybe other places might be different in the United States. I don't know. But I can only speak for where I'm at in Florida. But yeah, they try to jip us as people. A lot of empty promises. You know, people upset. People don't have food. People, well, they don't. They got food, but people have money. People can't pay their bills. I mean, shit's crazy. All of this is bullshit. All of this is bullshit. 
America can do better. How you really going to make your money increase, man, is by investing. You have to invest your money into something. I know it's hard, people, black, white, whatever. I know it's hard. I know it's extremely hard to live paycheck to paycheck because I'm living it. Now I am. Before, I was actually on to the ball game until Mr. Corona decides to want to hit it and fuck up shit. So we all got a setback. Everybody in this world got a setback for the most part. Hell, even celebrities got a setback. We all got a setback. Hell, even women have a setback. You think women will appreciate men now because of the corona? <laughs> Let's get let's just stick to the finances, man. What's valuable is cash. Cash. Cash is valuable. Cause without cash, credit won't exist. Think about it. My biggest advice, which I wish I would have done, I'm still young, cause I, I'm, I'm talking like I'm an old ass man, cause I ain't all that old. I'm still young, but you know, my mind is different. It's a lot more wiser, but I'm getting up there. <laughs> Y'all don't be fooled by these credit cards, man. Don't be getting a whole bunch of credit cards either. Stick to one to help you build yourself. See, it's designed for you to lose, but you can also use this instrument to get ahead in life if you know how to do it the right way without maxing it out. Just using portions just to get by that you know you could pay off real quickly at the end of the the statement. But before, what's a good way to avoid a financial interest and in, and in, and in money? Now, please behold, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just only speaking on my experience. Now, what you can do is this: you can. You can pay, like say for instance, you got a, a car note or mortgage or whatever at the end of the month. What you do is you pay half that amount of what you owe to beat any of the interest within that weeks of that time frame period. And then you could pay the other half before the due date of your mortgage or car payment and such and such and such you know how much interest you'll be beating off for those days like the banks if you keep doing that the banks ain't gonna be getting all your money like that cause you, you're, you're paying it off way ahead in time and the interest is not being applied to whatever you're trying to play off I want to pay off my bad. I want to play off, but pay off. So, just think about that for a moment. You actually taking the W. I hate credit cards. I hate credit cards with a passion. Men and women, I know y'all hate these things. I know y'all can't stand credit cards. Cause credit cards fuck me up. <laughs> I 
man. God damn. I'll, I'll tell you. I, I don't mean to curse, though. Sorry. I'm a Christian, so I'm trying to calm down on the the craziness. You know what I mean? I'm getting a little bit older now, man. So I got to chill a little bit. But sometimes I do go in like a motherfucker, though. <laughs> Like that Ken bastard, he about to catch his though, cause he, good God, he need, he need to get his. But we will save that for another video. We working on that. But listen, as far as Capital One goes, or any of these credit card companies go, my suggestion, folks, if you can avoid credit cards, don't deal with them. Don't deal with. It. You save yourself a lot of heartache, headaches. Get cash, man. If you go to have a credit card, maybe have one. The most is two. But make sure you have a lower APR. You know, you got to look for the interest. It's not even the prices, young man. Because I know a lot of young people may watch this too. It's not even the prices of the products that you're purchasing or you're financing, I should say. It's not even that. It's the interest. Because the interest is going to be added on to whatever you owe sometimes you might be paying three times four times the amount of what you originally got that's like going all right for instance rent a center you know rent a center they got computers they got appliances i think they got mirrors glasses uh, electronics playstation fives six seven eighths and nines and tens and shit all of them on them gadgets, man. So guess what? They say, "All right, you want it? No problem. You could just give me five dollars up here, front. What? You be loving that shit. Get yourself a TV, PlayStation, all that. Da, da, da. But guess what? If you look at the price, you spent eight grand on all that shit. But you're like, what? You gotta read." Reading is fundamental. A lot of people don't read on that shit. This, and what I'm talking about, this this is what happened. This is what happened to a girl I know. Now, I'm not gonna say no names and shit. I'm gonna go leave it confidential. But she said she didn't know. I said, look at the fine print. She signed a contract. This shit says $8,957.64. Good God. I said, man, you better not spend that money. You better, you better just go ahead and return that shit back. Don't waste your time with that. But, 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 and I said, listen, you go regret doing this shit. I'm telling you, all them long term payments, you go regret that shit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't follow what she did. Don't follow what other people say you should do. Hell. You don't even have to follow up what I say about this video. But you got to take into consideration that you probably been through some debt. I'm sure like everybody has. So what's the best way of getting out of it if you're in it? Simple. It's not about savings. Putting money to the side is one thing. Investing and saving is another. Understand that. Invest. Invest. I'm going to tell you an example about investing. Black folks. If y'all want to know some shit. In y'all. In the black community. In y'all communities. Or our communities. Whatever. Black communities. Right? What do you see as stores in the black community? As restaurants or like little convenience stores I should say. Do you see black folks? Having a. Chinese restaurant <laughs> or only one do you see black folks you know primarily owners of little bodegas or little you know this little bombs and pops little stores you know what I'm saying you don't really see that or banks I tell you what you do see in the hood you go see all these convenience stores owned by different races of people in the black community and they're not even black. See, I heard of something about a black owned bank. They got a black owned bank that's out. Maybe that's something I want to look into. A black owned bank. 
I'm going to tell you something about Atlanta, Georgia. I've heard a lot of good things about Atlanta for black folks. I was also told that they treat black black people really good up there. And there's a lot of people who enjoy life. They get to work hard, use the rest of their money, take care of their bills. Yeah. You know? And they got money to also spend. That's the key. Sometimes you gotta downsize. Cause I downsize. Forgot to mention that. See, I ain't got no cable. I don't want cable. I don't even watch motherfucker. So I ain't, I ain't got cable shit. I got the stick. <laughs> I ain't paying a damn thing. And I got internet. You know what I'm saying? But y'all catch my drift, man. But anyways, guys, thank you all for joining the Andrew 26101 show. Those of y'all who are new, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. I want to know what you guys think about this. And if you guys are in depth, what are you planning on doing about it? Are you willing to plant the seeds to be empowerment? Educate your mind? Or are you just going to continue on the road of procrastination? Or just don't care. I'm out.